Mr. Philippe G, why did you decide to be a spy? Well, that is a, a very long story, but to keep it uh, short, I decided to go into the CIA because I didn't want to go into business with my father, and um, I also was faced with compulsory military service. I had rejected a CIA recruitment approach to me during my last year as a university student. But later, when I was going to have to serve in the military, I recalled that I could do my military service inside a CIA program. So I was an opportunist in a sense because I thought it would be much more interesting and challenging to be involved in secret operations and intelligence work than in peeling potatoes and washing dishes in the military service. So that's basically why I went in. There was the romantic factor, of course, of spies and meetings on dark streets in Vienna and so forth, but uh, I was interested, of course, in international affairs as well. How is the CIA organized? The CIA is uh, organized, uh, very broadly speaking, into administration, intelligence analysis and reports writing, and the secret operations. And uh, the secret operations are where I worked, and it's where the CIA runs all of its um, spies and penetrations of uh, other governments, and where it also puts in some governments, takes out governments it doesn't like, and so forth. Like in the case of um, the Dominican Republic, for one example, um, I'm writing an article just now on Grenada, and I went back and studied the American invasion and intervention in the Dominican Republic during 1965. And I um, came across a reference in um, one of the books, the memoirs of the former deputy director of the CIA. He tells the story how uh, during this Dominican crisis when the Marines had landed, uh, he was over at the White House. And he went up uh, to see President Johnson, who was uh, in bed at the time. And Johnson said to him, uh, how can I get my troops out of the Dominican Republic? And the CIA uh, deputy director said to Johnson, well, we need to put in a new president. And Johnson said, who? And the deputy director said, well, we have a man named Joaquin Balaguer, whom we think is the best candidate. Johnson said immediately, he said, that's it, that's my policy, put that guy in office down there. Just like that. And of course, then later on, the CIA arranged all of the elections and um, made sure that Balaguer won over um, Juan Bosch at that time. But this is the uh, secret operations side of the CIA where all of these types of oper operations occur. In an interview, you said that CIA interfered many times, also in Italy, to lead political choices. Can you explain it? Well, yes, I think th that uh, the Italians probably have the um, uh, longest experience of um, CIA intervention uh, of any country in the world, because the first intervention was for the 1948 elections, and this was the first big CIA intervention in elections anywhere in the world. The, the agency had only been founded a few months earlier. And as I recall, I think uh, Truman set up a fund of $10 million dollars for the intervention in those elections. The years following, I think over 20 years, the CIA spent $50 million or more in uh, Italian elections when they came along, mostly in favor of the Christian Democratic Party. Then in, um, let me think, in 1972, I think they intervened again. And uh, I've forgotten, I think it was around uh, $10 million, but there was $800,000 in 1972 that went to the MSI. I think it went straight to uh, Michelli. Then in 1976, President Ford uh, agreed that the CIA could spend up to $6 million in the Italian elections. What they're doing now, I don't have any idea. But um, you can be sure that the United States is not ignoring what is going on in Italy, particularly with respect to the elections. Do you think there is a connection between uh, P2, do you know what is P2, and CIA? I, am, I uh, find the P2 um, case very confusing. 
And I think a lot of people do because it, it seems to get into everything, particularly into Latin America. But <clears throat> everyone knows, or should take it for granted, that between NATO countries there is liaison between the services. So the CIA is in constant contact with the Italian services. And as I recall, some of the chiefs of the Italian services were members of PEDUE. So you can um, find there one possible connection through the Italian uh, security chiefs, a connection between the CIA and uh, PEDUE. But my um, suspicion is that the connections would exist in other countries, such as in Latin America. What do you think about Italian secret services? <clears throat> I never worked with any of the Italian services or on Italian matters when I was in the CIA. So I can only tell you what um, I've read from secret reports which have uh, been published in the very recent past, two, three years ago. One in particular, written by an, a man named Dominic Peroni, who was an official of the military intelligence office in the United States Embassy in Rome. He was expelled, in fact, by the Italian government, the first American since World War II, I think, who has been declared persona non grata, because of the terrible comments he had about the Italian services. His evaluation of them was very, very low. And the way he wrote his report, it was insulting, uh, the things that he said about the leaders of these Italian services. So that's one person, uh, person's opinion who was actually working with these services in the very recent past. I think, um, I think that's uh, probably as close as I could get to an evaluation of someone who actually knows. But on the other, other hand, these services have had their successes, such as the, the liberation of, um, of General uh, Dozier. Um, which has to be seen as a plus. So probably you have a mixed situation. You have been expelled from Great Britain and France. Can you tell us what happened? I was uh, expelled from Britain and uh, they refused to give any reasons. In Britain a foreigner has very little security because the law there reads that if the Home Secretary finds that a person is a threat to the security of the country he can expel him without any appeal and without giving any evidence. So I, of course, defended uh, myself as I could in Britain, both legally and politically. But uh, legally, I had no way to stay. And um, <clears throat> many years later, I uh, discovered uh, through documents I got in a lawsuit in Washington that uh, Kissinger, when he was Secretary of State, made a trip to London, a secret trip, two trips in fact, uh, in uh, 1976 in order to intervene with the British government uh, so that they would expel me from the country. The British said that I had been a threat to their security, but in actual fact I wasn't. It was the work that I was doing against the CIA. And in this particular case, just before the expulsion from Britain um, happened, I was in Jamaica in which I exposed a lot of CIA operations there. They were trying to do in Jamaica at that time against the Michael Manley government, it was a social democratic government, what they had done before in Chile against Allende. In other words, to undermine his government and um, bring in a conservative regime. Uh, then I went over to Holland and uh, the Dutch refused to extend my uh, residence permit there, alleging again that I had uh, become a security threat. Then I was in Paris and uh, in France I was uh, arrested and uh, was given no reason but kept in prison or jail overnight and then driven secretly by the police up to the Belgian border and put across. And uh, then in Rome um, I uh, was simply stopped once at the, um, after many trips to uh, Rome, I was uh, stopped at the Fumicino, Fumicino airport and uh, given no reason at all, and then made to go, kept uh, oh, hours, you know, in custody, and then sent uh, back to Switzerland. And then here in Germany, once I was, before I lived here, I was coming to visit my wife, and uh, I was arrested here at the airport, taken to the local uh, uh, prison overnight, and then back out to the airport and sent back to Holland. 
So over a period of a year, I was um, very unstable in terms of being able to live somewhere and work, and I was expelled from five NATO countries, none of which gave any reasons, but simply this sinister undercurrent of being a security risk, which in fact I wasn't to any of these countries. It was simply the work that I was doing uh, on the CIA question and the intervention by the Americans with the other NATO governments to make it impossible for me to find a place to live.